Greeting YouTube. I've been reading a post-apocalyptic game resource recently. Reviewed it event follow once I'm finished with though it's a big book, so it may be a bit. Um and I got to comparing post-apocalyptic tropes with fantasy tropes. Because while they're vastly different genres, they do have certain things in common, though I think there's an argument to support the idea that first edition D D was both fantasy and post apocalyptic. Um because raiders are raiders, whether they're orcs or mutants, thieves are thieves, slavers are slavers, farmers are farmers. So there's a lot of things that are the same. Their you know, serial numbers have just been changed a bit. Now raiders may have a little more more variety because they could be mutants, so they have weird and freaky mutations. Um, if you are the Gamma World mutant epoch style, or they could be hideously deformed if you're more along the lines of the Darrow and Worlds or Aftermath or Morrow Project. Um, These be hideously burned survivors of some poison or radiation or something like that. But I began to realize that I found, or I'm finding, the post apocalyptic tropes to be more intimidating and more depressing because in fantasy the heroes are just that the player characters are often heroes often out to save the day it's not always the trick the case but i tend to play fantasy games as i want to play a hero and if i run them i want people to be heroes i like that idea i enjoy that genre of playing so even if there are certain things that exist in the world raiders and kidnappers, and slavers, and, um, people who are controllers behind the scenes, you know, puppet masters. They're all the bad guys. Um, even if I don't use racial alignments, and I don't, um, it doesn't mean that there aren't an endless supply of bad, bad guys, or women, using guys generically. Um, just that there are endless supply of, you know, bad people in our world people who are willing to steal and lie and cheat and rape and maim and murder and manipulate all in the name of selfishness and greed. And that's one of the reasons I think that I find the post-apocalyptic types of tropes to be more depressing. Because a raider in a fantasy game is something that I'm never going to encounter. A home invader is someone I could encounter in my royal world, and that's intimidating and terrifying. Um, and you can't really stop someone from breaking into your home. All you can do is make it difficult enough that they're going to want to go somewhere else. Um, which is kind of the idea of door locks and windows. and The fact that I live in a situation where there's only really two egresses to my home, and I like that. It limits the options of people trying to get in. Then I've taken what precautions I can without having to live in a fortress. But again, if they want to get in, there are sledgehammers. They will get in. When I run post-apocalyptic games, there are no alignment systems. I still like the idea of heroes, but it's much more morally ambiguous. And people make much more much more realistic moral choices. And even though I will never find myself in a Gamma World like setting with weird freaking mutants around, I could, under extraordinary circumstances, find myself in a post apocalyptic environment. It could happen. I mean, it would be rare, it would be difficult to achieve, it would probably have to involve some really massive natural disaster. I don't think we're ever going to have a general nuclear war. In fact, I think that most of the missiles probably wouldn't launch. Um, but it's possible that through actions well beyond our control, we could end up in that post-apocalyptic situation. And that chaos is far more terrifying than a fantasy setting. Because it's me in that setting. It's those I love. It's the world I know and the world I want to continue being torn down and destroyed. So when I read about a slaver in a post-apocalyptic setting, it seems much more visceral and much more readily terrifying than the idea of a slaver 
in a world with orcs and elves and dwarves and dragons. Both are depressing, both are unethical and immoral. Um, both should be stopped. Neither should be tolerated. But I'm not ever going to be a slave in a fantasy setting. But under the right circumstances, I could be one in a post-apocalyptic setting. And those I love could be. So that's more depressing. And it is a darker, grimmer world than even like the midnight setting is for a fantasy, because it's still fantasy. But I wouldn't want to run the midnight setting um, for the fact that it is so grim and dark. And I don't want to spend my life speculating about the world in a post-apocalyptic setting in a realistic manner. That's why I like to run post-apocalyptic settings generations after the apocalypse, even though realistically I realize that it would no longer be a post-apocalyptic setting. We like the tropes. We like the gamma world setting. That's just the way it is. We're willing to ignore the true face of Reconstruction just because we like the idea of mutants with stop sign shields and laser pistols. Um, so I'm asking my viewers today, do you find the speculation of post-apocalyptic settings more viscerally terrifying and intimate, I guess is the word I want to say, than the speculations of a fantasy setting, even though they could be equally horrifying, even though the evils in a fantasy setting could be greater in some regards. You could have Sauron. You're not going to have Sauron in our world, but you could have oppressors. You could have raiders. You could have your home in ruin burned to embers. You could have everything that you know, the very fabric of your life, torn asunder. And I find that far more terrifying and far more depressing. And even though that is the potential in a post-apocalyptic setting, I like to have it to be a little more positive. I want to have the whole reconstruction, rediscovery, redemption aspect of a post-apocalyptic setting as opposed to the tearing down stage, the, the dog-eat-dog, dog, willing to do anything to survive stage, which is just depressing. Because, um, as a famous author once said, I think it might have been Heinlein, uh, it said, if you've never, if you've never really been hungry, you don't understand that you would kill for a can of stewed tomatoes. And true hunger will drive you in a way that our comfortable world won't. I mean, right now I'm looking at a bag of Fritos. I'm on vacation. I'm taking a break, and some, I know, and some oatmeal cookies sitting there. I have more calories available to me than some people have all day long, and these are just snacks. Next week I go back to my regular scheduled diet. Um, so tell me, does the fantasy world draw you in to the point where you find yourself immersed in it to the extent where you fully understand the terror of being in that world? Or is the speculation of a post-apocalyptic setting in our world, because it's always our world with something laid on top of it, even if it's in the future, it's still our world in the future with something laid on top of it, meteors, nuclear war, viruses, alien invasion, you know, pick your post-apocalyptic um, event of your choice. So which do you find more terrifying?